So, so what? Well, let's try something here. Um, now, it's again, we're oversimplifying things because it is also, there's also the question of frequency, right? If I place my little detector here in front of the, what's going on here? Oh, it's not screwed in properly. That's why. That would help. I place my, uh, my detector here in front of our, uh, our antenna. We've talked about this before. Accelerated charges going back and forth in the uh, metal bar lead to radial electric fields pointing that way or that way, which causes the bulb to light up. Well, if I place the cardboard in front, the bulb still lights up. The bulb still lights up. Now, so apparently there's also a frequency issue here, right? Because the cardboard will re-radiate a lot when we're talking about frequencies for the visible light range. But this is the radio frequency range, right? The, the wavelengths here are much larger than for visible light. For visible light, you're talking about uh, a wavelength, a wavelengths on the order of hundreds of nanometers. Whereas for radio, this thing is a decimeter wa uh, radio transmitter. You're talking about a wavelength on the order of 0.1 meters, okay? So it's 10 to the ninth times larger. Uh, for radio than it is for for the visible light. So apparently we can get these electrons to accelerate a lot or accelerate enough using high frequencies, small wavelengths like invisible light. But they're not accelerating that much when we're dealing with lower frequencies, larger wavelengths. Uh, and that kind of makes sense because what's this? what is this thing? Cardboard is a blank. If I can hold on to it. It's an insulator. So what do we know about insulators? What's, what, what distinguishes an insulator from a conductor? No mobile charges. Okay, so the charges aren't that mobile. They're, they're somewhat mobile. They can accelerate enough when, back, uh, when we're uh, applying visible light to the uh, to electrons in the cardboard. But they're not, they're, they're not mobile enough to accelerate when we're applying a much larger wavelength and a much lower frequency. Well, what if we had a conductor instead? Okay, here's a conductor, sheet of just aluminum foil. Uh, these ha this has mobile charges, right? This has mobile electrons. These uh, mobile charges should be, to be able to accelerate no matter what frequency we apply to them. And that's one reason why metals are shiny. You get nice reflection, nice re-radiation effects from the charges that are uh, accelerating due to any wavelength we shine on them. So if I place this in front of, and place this between the antenna and the little detector here, what do you think is going to happen? Should go out, and it does, because well, what do I mean? What do we mean by blocking it? What do we mean by blocking it? There, that's right. The charges are accelerating in this um, in this metal foil, and they're re-radiating. They're acceler They're free to accelerate as much as they as much, until they hit the edges, right? As much as they possibly can. And so you're getting sort of a maximum amount of re-radiation. And again, the re-radiation downstream is such that it's going to cancel out the original uh, electric field. Okay, So if I have mobile charges that are free to re-radiate, I can reduce or even completely cancel out the original radiative electric field. Poke holes in this, like, uh, like just like circular holes or... Uh, yeah, you could have, you might be able to have something like that. It would depend on, you might be able to, yeah, it would cancel out almost everything except for a tiny area, right? But, but again, it, there's an issue of, it, the, how, the size of the aperture is going to 
and, and how much you're going to see depending on the aperture size is going to depend also on the wavelength. Okay, so there's there's that sort of effect that's going on as well. But let let's actually let's let's come back to a, another example where you do have something that isn't continuous. You have something like this. Okay. So we we talked about last week or uh, earlier this week we talked about polarization. Polarized light or polarized uh, radiation means that the radiative electric field is lined up only in one particular direction, right? So these charges are accelerating back and forth. So the radiative electric field is polarized along the x-axis from for this particular object, right? That way or that way. So here's a question. We have lights or radio waves being emitted from this object. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the... Uh, the solid piece of foil. Thank you. I'm going to do the same thing as the solid for the solid piece of foil. So here at location A, let me uh, increase the size here. Here at location A is our uh, radio transmitter. Here's our detector, light bulb detector. And I'm going to place the uh, piece of foil with the strips in it. Either the strips lined up in the direction of the detector or the strips perpendicular to the direction of the detector. In which situation is the light bulb going to light? What do you think? Okay, so half and half. <laughs> and then some say both. Okay. All right, so let's think about what we just talked about. We said that here we have electric fields pointing either positive or negative x direction, alternating back and forth, coming out towards you. Right? So it's polarized along the x direction. So that means I can detect radiation along that direction if my antenna is oriented that way. I place the solid piece of foil here. And what do we see? Went out because the re-radiation coming from the foil is canceling out. Right? We have accelerated charges back and forth. And so that is giving a re-radiation, again, oriented in the same direction, but just canceling out that original radiative electric field. So let's pose the question a different way. Which orientation is going to give us the maximum amount of cancellation or the maximum amount of re-radiation? YA. It's oriented the same direction, so you'd think that we can get the charges to move along the long way and accelerate for a longer time, for example, than it was when it was like this, right? Well, let's try it. It's lit up. It goes out. Can everybody see that? So it goes out, lit up. Now, it's not the perfect demo because my uh, object here doesn't stretch the entire length of the transmitter, but... You can kind of see it does make a difference, doesn't it? Okay. And, you know, this is one people fall for the wrong answer for this one every time, so I'm not surprised by this. Because it's easy to think about something waving this way, and you say, well, i got to put it that way to block it from moving back and forth somehow. But you really need to think about this idea of re-radiation. Which way are these charges going to accelerate? Well, if they're if they are... Uh, if, or if the original radiation is lined up in the x direction, you're going to get acceleration along the x direction. And I can get a lot of acceleration because the charges can easily travel along the foil strips lined up in that direction. But if I orient it this way, they're accelerating in the x direction again, but not for very long, right? Because the, it's narrow in that particular orientation. So we don't get as much re-radiation in this case as we do in, in this case, right? Make sense? 